Welcome. The following video or audio are the study of the Bible, chapter by chapter, verse by verse of the King James 1611 Bible. Our family welcomes you to our household Bible ministry time. You may watch and listen with us. Our goal has been from Genesis to the book of Revelation. Each chapter by chapter we try. And topical preaching and teaching aids you can find by searching different topics. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. Come and appreciate the word of God for our spiritual growth, our development in the word of God by these lessons. Please feel, feel, please feel welcome to upload and share our Bible study with family and friends. Like us, subscribe, write a comment, let us know you heard the message. The video or audio are not copyrighted and should be used and not abused. Thank you. Second John, the elder, that's John, unto the elect lady, chosen by God, and her children. So this woman is not named. It's a very short letter, 13 verses. And the Holy Spirit has thought to put it in our Bible because of its importance. In the truth, with whom I love in the truth. That's Jesus. That's the word. And not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. So this woman's loved by Christians. Whoever she is. God knows who she is. <clears throat> and verse 1 we learn two things from the writer which we know is John and to you know to this woman and her children we always don't have to have a name in Christ there is no names here but God knows who we are and other Christians know who you are there is no name being made here. For the truth's sake, the Word of God, the Bible, Jesus Christ, which dwelleth in us, that's Christ. Remember the verse 17 we did last night, how it's removed out of Bibles in 1 John 1 1. Why we're to read our Bibles? Why we're to study our Bibles? Why we're to memorize our Bibles? And shall be with us forever what is that well what did jesus say heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall never pass away so that word's in us that word is always going to be with us in eternity that word will be there and unless you got a unless you only have a king james bible according to first john 5 17 that word's not there in other bibles it's only in the King James Bible and its family tree. The family tree of the King James Bible is the tree of life. Five, seven. The tree of the King James Bible is the tree of life. The tree of modern Bibles is the knowledge of good and evil. Now, wh which one do you think God represented and which one do you think Satan re represented it? Is not our Bibles written with paper? Does not paper come from trees? Kind of interesting, isn't it? So you take one verse out of the Bible and we, you, you get rid of 2 John. You can't cross-reference it. Grace, that's what we need. Even, even being saved, you need grace from God. <clears throat> that's God's love. Grace. Be with you. The woman and her children. Mercy. That's God's love. And peace. That's God's love. Don't you think this woman who was saved, she's elect lady, that John is taking time to write to her, don't you think she would have grace, mercy, and peace? There is no rebuke to this woman in this letter. Matter of fact, it's a letter of warning. We always need more grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and 
from the Lord Jesus Christ of God and Jesus are the same. The Son of the Father. We read about that in 1 John 5. In truth and love. All through 1 John. I rejoice greatly that I found thy children, this woman's children, walking in truth. Oh, your son hit a ball. Yay. Your son got an award. Yay. Your son graduated from college today in the president's speak. Yay. John says, that's nonsense. You know what I go yay about? Your children are walking in the word of God and Jesus. That's what I rejoice about. They're doing and living and being doers of the word. I rejoice in that. That's a good testimony for this mother. She's hearing from the beloved disciple, the elder. She's getting a report from the elder that your children are faithful. Amen. As we have received a commandment from the Father, And now I beseech thee, lady, women don't like to be called that today, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we have from the beginning, that we love one another. Now he's reminding her. And he reminded us constantly in 1 John. John preaches the message of love. For God so loved the world. And it's not a fluffy, toughy, tulip, kind of chocolatey, uh, you know, marshmallowy kind of love. It is the true love of God. You know, I, don't, I forget what the exact words were, but a teenage girl came up today, you know, why is he being so harsh and all that? Listen, I'm not being harsh. I'm preaching Jesus and the love of God. And once if you were to receive Christ as your Savior, then you understand that the love, what it is, of God unto Christians. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. Oh, we, we got another aspect of love that we didn't learn from 1 John. When we do what the Bible tells us to do, you have love. So when the Bible tells me to go in all the world and preach the gospel, and you accuse me of having no love, you are the one that is false. You're the one that is lying. You're going to stand before God as a false witness. Because I am doing it because I, I love them and I don't want to see them go to hell. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Be ye doers of the word. And... For many, now it's funny because he says, walk in the commandment. The last of the last sentence. For many deceivers are entered into the world. We are speaking about the commandment of loving others. And then he says, for, for the purpose thereof, that I just wrote what I just wrote, for many deceivers are entered into the world. So the, the condition of loving the brethren. As the Bible tells us to do, as we are supposed to be brethren of God, one family. And the aspect of that love, one of the things is that there are deceivers out there. And if a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ does not feel loved, Satan has a possibility to send somebody else into that person's life to show them love. That's a fluffy, tiffy kind of chewably love. That they're not getting from God's people. Now, if you are shown true love of God and you restricted and, and, and went off to Satan and it was the right love, then you're the fool. You're the one that was deceived. But if that church or that, that group does not know how to, or did not show you love, or had cliques, 
And then you were brought by deceive, for many deceivers are entered into the world. Many deceivers. Many. Here's another warning in the Bible about deceivers. What are we to watch for as Christians amongst ourselves, our family, our brothers and sisters in the Lord? We're to watch out for deceivers. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. There are people out there who say, well, there's no Jesus. There's no God. Well, Jesus Christ, you know, he was just a good teacher. He was a, you know, a rabbi. He was, that's what teacher, rabbi means. But he wasn't God, and that's the principle of this teaching right here. There, I mean, the person said, oh, yeah, Jesus is a historical figure. Is he God? Well, no. And I dealt with them today. As soon as I started preaching that Jesus is God according to the scripture, they had no standing. So a person that does not say, a person that denies Jesus God head is a deceiver is come in the flesh this is a deceiver and an antichrist now wait a minute let's take all these bible believing christians okay we know the jehovah witnesses do not believe god is jesus and jesus is god oh the antichrist is going to come they want me to put something in my arm and they want to put something in my head so if i go through the checkout it's going to come out six 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 oh my god the antichrist is coming oh the antichrist they're voting for the antichrist my friends, Christians, don't you realize that there's a religious sect running around the whole world and the Bible, John says, that they are Antichrist? We're one nation under God and our money says in God we trust people. Well, we talk about football and other kinds of junk like that. And those God-forsaken Russians over there, they're going to Nukus, they're going to kill. And the Russians just said last week, Jehovah Witnesses, you're no longer allowed in our country get out amen well and i'll give you a big end amen for that you know what russia had and this was several years ago i couldn't couldn't remember when i was saved and russia opened up the door to christianity and then you know, he said come on in bring your bibles i know a guy who worked in the ministry i don't know if he ever made it there but uh but there came one problem from the russians about the Bible going up. Now listen, now hold on to it. I want you to hear this. There came a problem from the Russians reporting about Christianity coming to their country. Was it the Bible? No. Was it Jesus Christ? No. We cannot believe this rock and roll that you have fested our teenagers in. The report that the Russians had about the Christians was they're bringing rock and roll. And the teenagers are adhering to the rock and roll more than the, 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 the deceive the, the, the teenagers. Now, was it Christian rock? Was it any kind of rock? There is no Christian rock. It's all Satan. And we've got a group of deceivers that we're so worried about the Antichrist. They are an Antichrist running around right now. Don't they put themselves in 144,000? Don't they put themselves in the tribulation? Well, there they are, the Antichrist. Look to yourselves, that we lose not those things which we have brought. All right now, here we go. But that we receive a full reward. Revelation three eleven. You can lose your rewards. I did not say salvation. <coughs> I said, you can lose your crown. You can lose your gold, your silver, your precious stone. You cannot lose your soul. Now, in the context of this little 13 verse, which I, I think I did for four months, one day a week. And you can go on my, my YouTube and you can go on my 
you can get the second epistle of John. I went verse by, I actually went word by word. A very detailed study. I advise you to look it up. We just were talking about deceivers. Now we're talking about losing a reward. To gain a full reward. So the concept is if you get involved with these deceivers, you lost rewards. Not your soul. You start pounding around with these people. You lost the reward. Well, I don't see anything wrong with, with this religion. I get very along with them very well. And, and you know, they talk they, they talk about their G I talk about my G. We get along very well. And if you had any rewards, you lost them. Because the Bible says, Marvel not the world hates you. Whosoever whosoever that's just as much as whosoever believes on the Lord shall be saved male female young old whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ has not God well I got the doctrine of Mary I got the doctrine of, of this Moroni I have got the doctrine of Gabriel I've got the doctrine of Michael I got the doctrine of whatever your religion is I've got the doctrine of, you know no meat diet you don't have God well we believe evolution and we're here by the you don't have God I just don't believe in God you don't have God he that bideth in the doctrine of Christ, the teachings of Christ, he has both the Father and the Son, capital S. Doctrine is what is taught. Doctrine comes by the Word of God. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, what the doctrine John has been teaching us. John teaches us that Christ died for our sins. Christ was buried. Christ arose from the grave. Christ is God. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. You are to love the brethren. On and on and on. First question I ask when they come to my door. Do you believe Jesus is God? Well, no. Well, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. We got a problem now. Let's get our Bibles. You see, you got your Bible. Let's get my Bible. And then that takes off. They're gone. They don't want to take the sword out. They don't want to do battle. So, if they bring not this doctrine, receive him, the deceiver, not into your house. Don't invite him into your house. Oh, I, I let him come in and I want to be a nice Christian. I want to be tolerant. The Bible says, do not let him in. Your house. And look what we read in verse 8. You are in danger of losing a reward. Man, don't go out there doing what the Bible tells you, doing right, and think, oh, I'm going to be a nice person. I'm going to let them in my house. When John tells us, no, don't do it. Receive him not in your house, neither bid him God speed. Now, a couple times I failed on this one. Because we're so prone to say, have a good day, see you later, hope you have a good night. You are not to wish them, I hope you have a good time, I hope you have a good night. Don't you wish, because you know what you're saying? May the next houses you go knock on, may you get some kind of person that will, will listen to you. Or maybe you get, uh, you know, converts. Maybe you'll be blessed with people that you go not. No, don't you even do that. What do you say to Jehovah Witness leaving? Bible. My Bible here, come on. My Bible says. Leave them with what the Bible says. When I was dealing with those Jehovah Witnesses today, I wish my wife would have been there. I quoted Bible, Bible, Bible. First John, first John, first John. 3.16. I left them with first first John 3 16. So when when God works on their heart, if, if he's working on them or Satan, they're gonna, God died for us. God suffered. 
uh, this Jesus, uh, uh, I can't, can't, can't have a drink or whatever they do. Never say have a good day. Never say nice to meet you. God is watching. For he that biddeth him God speed, now watch this, is partaker of his evil deeds. Now, if you say, have a good day, God bless you, have a good night, nice knowing you, whatever you can say, good, and they go to the next house or whatever house, and someone gets converted, someone gets attracted to them, that is on your account. Brethren, you know what we need to learn? We need to learn that God holds this flapping tongue. I'm holding my tongue and my lips. God holds us responsible. Even if we say, have a good day, good night, is deadly enough to someone who deceives. Jesus said by every idle word, whether it's a joke to make people laugh and break the moment, or you're just going to say, I, and here's the deadliest one. I know what you're going through. That's a lie. I, I, I had something one time uh, it was with my wife with a cancer or death like that. Oh, I know what you're going through. And I said, and I said are you battling cancer? Is your spouse battling cancer? Or did they die? I forget what it was. Well, no. Then you don't know what I'm, and then you're, you're trying to give me advice. We've got to learn as Christians, the very first thing is God, even we're saved, God is going to hold us to this flapping tongue of hell that James spoke about. So don't, you shouldn't even do battle with him, but God has blessed me with, with enough scripture memorization that I can deal with him. And when I meet them out in the road, out in the street, I will find out how dedicated they are. And if you can find their little wishy-washy, or maybe they're, maybe they're young in, in, that, in that outfit, maybe you can put enough scripture in their heart that maybe they'll, one day they'll say, um, wow, what he's saying is true. But if they're well into their religion and all that, then just say, get out of here. And then you put your shoes on, which I, uh, you know how many times I miss when my foot was, was bandaged and all that. I go follow them down the road. I want to make sure they're not going to talk to my neighbors. I told my daughter today, when they were at the farmer's market, I'm going to stand, I'm going to pull the sword out, I'm going to protect those people from them vultures. I'll go follow them. Quoting all the way, John 10 30, I and the Father are one. I and the Father. You tell these people that I and the Father is one, they find they'll get in their car and they'll go away. The biggest fight for these deceivers is get your Bible. Just because they carry they carry a Bible, New World Translate, they never use it and they never open it. Only to the good places. Having many things to write unto you. I would not write with paper and ink. Ooh. So man did write the Bible and they used paper and ink. Ooh. Men wrote the Bible. Give me a chapter and verse on that one. Matter of fact, you don't even have to give me a chapter. Just give me the book name and the and the verse. You don't have to name the chapter of this one. But I trust to come unto you and speak face to face. So he's going to meet this woman. That our joy may be full. Alright, let's look at the inspiration of the Holy Spirit now. John is going to meet this woman, Lord willing. And he said, I'm going to talk to you face to face. This is not going to be a church. He's going to sit down with her and they're going to talk. And yet he's thought that verses 7, because verses 1 through 6 are the introduction. I forget what they call it. You know, when you start off the letter sincerely and all that. You, you do, but he thought it was so important for verses seven to eleven to be said. I am not just going to trust this to vocalization. I want to write this down before I get to you. And Holy Spirit said, "That's very good. I want that in the Bible." Now, when you read like we read today, the works of Solomon was not written in this 
in Nathan the prophet? Was it not written in Eagle the prophet? Was it not put in, a, in the... And you say, well, where is that? But where is that? And John writes at the end of the Gospel of John, if we had written everything we could about Jesus Christ, I mean, you would need a tracker trailer to carry your Bible around. Okay? And so there's some things not written in the Bible. And yet, here is one verse, two verse, three verse, four verse, five verses to a woman that he's going to meet and talk to. The, he said, the Holy Spirit, he wrote it down with paper and ink. The Holy Spirit said, write this down. I'm going to go see her. Write it down. Okay, here's a letter. Send it off. And it's in your Bible. It's one of the 66 books of the Bible. And what's it tell us? You better watch out for deceivers and Jehovah Witnesses matches it. The children of the elect ladies, the children of thy elect sister. That's not the elect lady in verse 1. This is the elect sister with her children. Greet thee. Amen. So John is going woman to woman to woman in his ministry and writing. And the Holy Spirit thought it was, it was important to us to have this warning about deceivers. And it's just amazing how this, word, this chapter, this book, has been relevant today. For God's glory and God's wonder, the Holy Spirit worketh. They may say, yeah, the Bible is written by man, but I know in my heart that's true. I believe that. I believe John wrote this. But all oh, the inspiration that God has to the Holy Spirit to say, here it is. The Father loves me so much. Jesus Christ, the Son, loves me so much. The Holy Spirit is out to teach me and, and certify the love of God, he says, I want you to have these five verses. It's a wonder. I mean, I would like to have the books to know what Jesus did. I'd like to know what happened to the to the 12 years. And then the, the, from 12 years old to, to uh, 30 years old. I'd like to see what Jesus did. You know, that's interesting. I'd really like to know what happened to Joseph, Mary's husband. But I like to know the day, the birth date of Jesus for surety, but the Holy Spirit says, you need to learn about these deceivers. I'll put that in there. Don't worry about the rest. And heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall never pass away. Truth will be with us forever. Verse 2. This, 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 what we just studied tonight is going to be in heaven forever. Some people are going to look over and look at it with their bald head and say, Oh, if I only read that book. If my preacher only preached on that book. And throwing down the crowns, I ain't got nothing. Better read all the Bible. 